Good morning, everybody. First, I want to thank the organizers to invite me to this uh, conference. And there is something very strange in this conference that you are all researchers of water, but 97% uh, of the water in uh, the earth, on the earth, is sea water, really. So maybe we have to focus a little bit more in this sea water, no? Some very simple things first uh, to know that it's um, we are water, no? Uh, the body is, uh, as uh, Gerard Pollack said uh, yesterday, is uh, two of third of um, of water. But during many times, this water in the body wasn't considered very important for medicine. But today. When you read the Ganon, for example, the Ganon is a book uh, the student of medicine used in uh, Europe to study uh, medical physiology. You can read that in the chapter one that the cell that conforms the body of the multicellular animals, aquatic or terrestrial, exists in an internal sea called the extracellular fluid. So this internal fluid is exactly the same than the primordial ocean where life appeared. There is many researchers today that they are saying that our internal liquid, our internal water, is seawater. Manuel Garcia Velarde, for example, in Madrid, from the University of Madrid, say that 80% of the water in the brain is seawater. So, if we are seawater, we can demonstrate that the life appears in seawater too, with the works of Greg Venter. Uh, you remember, he's a man who makes the decodification of uh, the human genome. And he made a fantastic uh, expedition. It was an ocean sampling expedition. He harvests seawater in different points of the globe, and he filtered this seawater and find more than six million of new genes and thousands of new protein families. That means, really, that seawater still produces life today. So, this was the hypothesis of René Quinton. Seawater is the origin of the life. Who was René Quinton? René Quinton was a French Renaissance man, really. He do a lot of things, and very well. He was a war hero. He started the First World War as soldier and finished as colonel. Um, only uh, uh, having uh, uh, good actions during the war. No? He was a writer and philosopher. He was an aviation predecessor. This is very important because René Quinton was a man who designed the, f the wings of the first planes. The granddaughter of uh, René Quinton has, uh, still has um, uh, letters from the uh, Brother, the Wright brothers, uh, asking René Quinton how they have to design these wings. And of course, René Quinton was biologist and, physio and physiologist. This is René Quinton on the right at, uh, in Paris, at the Bourget. Uh, when René Quinton died in uh, 1925, he was very famous in uh, France. He had uh, funeral states. He had a statue in uh, his hometown, in Chamonix. It's a little town uh, very close to Paris. It's 44 kilometers far to Paris. Mm, a lot of personalities came to his funeral. Uh, writers, actresses, uh, ambassadors from other countries, generals, thousands of uh, mothers with uh, young uh, children on arms, saved by René Quinton. The president of the French Republic at this time, Paul Penlevé, read the panegyric of René Quinton. So he was very famous. And why René Quinton was very famous at this time? He was compared to Louis Pasteur, to Charles Darwin. Why? Because he saved thousands and thousands of people in France at this time. The most important here is to read the title of the newspaper. This is a newspaper from the beginning of the 20th century, and he compares René Quinton to Lee Pasteur, and he says that the works of uh, Pasteur 
gave us a conception of the, these eyes, but the works of Ronnie Kinton give us a conception of health. So seawater is going to help us to, um, have, uh, to, to give all the elements to uh, the patient to uh, improve it's, uh, himself, uh, his health. René Quinton wrote a fantastic book called L'eau de mer milieu organique, is a seawater organic medium. Uh, it is a, a book where uh, he demonstrates the identity between uh, the organic uh, water and isotonic seawater. And in the last pages, he explained how, how is the protocol of René Quinton. This is very important, and we will go back uh, on this. Uh, there is a lot of followers of René Quinton at the beginning of the 20th century. Uh, a lot of uh, doctors uh, wrote their te doctoral thesis about seawater. Here is one about uh, drinkable seawater in dyspepsia, uh, Professor Dr. Barrer. And René Quinton opened a lot of marine dispensary where they only practice the marine therapy with seawater. This is the first one, opened in Paris. Uh, is uh, very near the Gare Montparnasse. And in this marine dispensary, they use these two products. One is a plasma of Kinton, and the other one is Duplas of Kinton. The first one is isotonic seawater, and the second one is hypertonic seawater. So René Kinton used only this seawater to treat a lot of people, we will go in to see which kind of uh, disease he'll treat. Uh, this is Rene Quinton at the marine dispensary. And as I, I told you, there is all, an old, uh, a complete generation of babies saved by Rene Quinton. And uh, this generation uh, was called in France Quinton babies. Jean Jaricot was, the doctor Jean Jaricot was a follower of René Quinton. He was the director of the marine dispensary of Lyon in the south of uh, France. He wrote a fantastic book called The Marine Dispensary. It's 600 of pages of treatments like this one. So his babies coming to the marine dispensary, totally dehydrated. The reason of the de dehydration change a lot. Uh, some are only malnutrition, others are uh, cholera infant, uh, infanted cholera, uh, others are come from uh, atrepsia, so there is many kinds of, uh, of problems. So these uh, children came into the marine dispensary and they use only uh, isotonic seawater, uh, some injection of isotonic seawater and they can retablish the babies uh, quickly. In only a few days, they can start to eat normally, to drink normally, and they, they gain the weight quickly. René Quinton see quickly that he can improve skin problems too. Uh, this is a, in, in Petit Genius eczema, another one in, um, in the leg, in arms, hands and arms, lichenoid eczema in neck. So, it starts to improve a lot of people with uh, dermatologic problems, psoriasis. There were a doctor in uh, France in uh, the 60s who demonstrated that with uh, Quinton uh, isotonic seawater, you can uh, have 28% of uh, uh, good results in psoriasis. We know that psoriasis is very complicated. There is other factors involved in psoriasis, but you can see the improvement are uh, amazing. So here we have a testimonium from uh, Malaysia. Uh, this is with only with drinking uh, isotonic seawater, and we can see before and after using in, uh, isotonic seawater. So. The most important thing, really, is not uh, how to use the seawater, is where we are going to have the seawater. Uh, is the original protocol of René Quinton. There is something very important, that in the food chain, 
only the plants are able to change the minerals from inorganic form to organic form for the rest of the food chain. And today it's very difficult for our food, our diet, to find all the minerals in uh, the plants. The plants may look the same, but they now have far fewer minerals. So it's very difficult to obtain all these minerals from our diet. They still have um, a food chain um, more safe. Is a food chain from the ocean. So you have the phytoplankton here. The phytoplankton can change all these minerals from inorganic form to in, uh, from inorganic to organic form for the rest of the food chain. And now we know that it's very difficult hitting fish uh, to obtain these minerals because the fish we are going to hit come from um, PC factories. So it's very difficult to obtain these minerals. But if we stay in this step of the food chain, the phytoplankton and the zooplankton, we are going to see the transformation of these minerals. This was the work of Maurice Aubert. Maurice Aubert was the president of the University of um, the Sea in France, in Nice. He works more than 40 years try, trying to explain this changing. How can we change the inorganic form from the minerals in the sea to the organic form? He said that they are biological facts, but very difficult to explain. And here we can see from the BBC, from uh, the Blue Planet, it was a documentary very, very uh, impressive. We can see the first step of this biocenosis. The biocenosis is exactly the way to transform these minerals from inorganic to organic form. Here you have a zooplankton. A zooplankton is a little animal, is less than one millimeter, and is going to hit the phytoplankton. And the phytoplankton is, I don't, I don't know if you can see, the just small points. Um, okay, we cannot see very well on the screen. But he's hitting this phytoplankton, and later he's going to excrete this phytoplankton, and you can see here the liquid, a difference liquid of density of liquid in the ocean. So this is the ocean, and this is the liquid from the zooplankton. So this is full of minerals, totally bioavailable for the rest of the food chains. So we have to harvest the seawater just under these points. These points are called a bloom. A bloom is a concentration of phytoplankton. And in this bloom, we can see a vortex. The vortex is just, uh, all this is phytoplankton. This is a picture from the European Agency of uh, uh, Aerospatial European uh, Agency. You can see here the coast of uh, Maine. And you can see the vortex here. All this is phytoplankton. There is many places in the world with this kind of uh, picture. This is a bearing stretch. You can see the vortex here. This is the same. This is Japan. You can see the vortex here. All that is phytoplankton, of course. This is a British Channel. We can see the phytoplankton bloom here. You can see here this concentration, concentration of phytoplankton is bigger than 700 kilometers. So it's, uh, it's like a forest, really. The, um, the real length of the Earth is the ocean. And here you have it here in the Gulf of Vizcaya. We can see this phytoplankton. This is the point, the original point of the Quinton lab. The picture was taken, this picture was taken in uh, 2008. You can see the phytoplankton here, and this one in 2014. So in the same point, you have always the same concentration of phytoplankton. Uh, that corresponds to the fish ground, really. So we can see here the different three vortex. So it's important to harvest in these points, 
as Mark Henry said, Mark Henry is, Dr. Mark Henry is professor of physics quantum in uh, the University of Strasbourg. He said that all these uh, points are uh, domain of Koreans, so all the minerals at these points can have the same properties. If you have as a seawater in another point, uh, you maybe you can not have the same properties. So we have to have us just under the phytoplankton. This is a phytoplankton, so harvesting the seawater here. Normally it's between uh, 30 met meters depth. You obtain this quality of uh, seawater. Uh, of course, uh, today there is a lot of uh, contamination in the oceans. We need to be very careful with everything. And uh, to be uh, more safe, you have to produce uh, all analyses uh, necessary to avoid, to, um, yeah, to avoid any contamination. So we do uh, endotoxin, heavy metals, uh, of course, uh, simple uh, analysis of um, uh, microbiological. And since the accident in Fukushima, we are making radioactivities uh, analysis too. So now we have the uh, pure seawater. We know how to har harvesting this uh, pure seawater. And now uh, how to make this seawater totally safe for the consumption. Uh, you have to sterilize this seawater. But it's very important that the seawater cannot be heating. Because when you heat the seawater, you produce, uh, as Chernikov and Bruskov demonstrate, a quantity of uh, free radicals, hydroxyl free radicals, and uh, these free radicals in contact with the different mucus are going to dehydrate instead to hydrate the body. There is another reason you don't have to heat the seawater. It's because the seawater contains uh, carbon organic total. Uh, normally it's around 3.24 milligrams per liter. And this organic, uh, carbon organic uh, is vitamin, amino acids, uh, we demonstrate that this uh, organic matter has a therapeutic effect. Uh, it's published in uh, Biochemical and Biophysical Research Communication, and he demonstrates that uh, this organic matter inhibits the arteriosclerosis progression. This is a drop of seawater enlarged 20 times, so it's very important that when you drink seawater, you don't have to drink all this, of course. <laughs> you have to filter the seawater using uh, cold microfiltration. This is the filters we are using, 0 0.22 micras, to uh, be sure that there is uh, nothing in the seawater. So, uh, as I told you, there is uh, two kinds of product. There is uh, hypertonic seawater and isotonic seawater. So to produce isotonic seawater, you have to reduce the quantity of salt. And to do it, there is only two ways. One is to produce, to do uh, electrolysis. But if you do the electrolysis, you are going to heat the seawater. So we cannot do it. And the other way is to, mm, to mix with uh, spring water. So the choice of the spring water was very uh, important. Uh, at the beginning, Ronnie Kinton tried to use uh, distilled uh, water, but distilled water is uh, heating seawater too, so we cannot use it. And he find in France uh, spring water with some special conditions, with a pH around 6 and a dry residue less than 25 milli milligrams per liter. Today we are using uh, Aguas de Fondetal in Badajoz in Spain, because they are uh, very uh, similar to the spring water uh, René Quinton used in France. So now we have um, Quinton hypertonic, Quint uh, isotonic seawater, uh, hypertonic seawater. And when we see the consequence of a mineral imbalance, as Dr. Linus Pauling said, all the disease can be explained by an imbalance of minerals, of vitamins. Dwayne Ashmed add that if there are no vitamins, the body more or less can use the trace elements, but the deficiency of minerals inactivates the vitamins. So in one ampule of uh, seawater, you can find these 78 minerals, only in one ampule. So and the minerals, they are not in, um, 
in one ampule of uh, Kinton, of uh, seawater is because uh, they are artificial or they are only a few grams on Earth. We start to work with uh, Professor Jose Miguel Sempere. He's um, uh, the professor of immunology area at the University of Alicante. And we try to demonstrate how the seawater uh, works really in our body. And the first things we done was to see the, the effect, uh, the immunomodulatory activity of the seawater in humans' uh, white cells. So this is very important because we put different uh, white cells in three kinds of um, uh, saline solution. This is a normal saline solution. This is RPMI. RPMI is the most famous uh, cell media growth. And isotonic seawater. As you can see here, the white cells, the little black uh, points uh, we have, there is no reaction. Here in the RPMI, we can see the aggregates of the white cells. So there is a small reaction in contact with the RPMI. And in isotonic seawater, you can see big aggregates of the white cells. That's very strange because it's an activation of the, um, the, the human system of the white cells. We do the same with red cells. With red cells, we have we put red cells and we, we measure um, the survival time of this red cell. And we see that with uh, the green line is a saline solution. They start to die at, uh, after 48 hours. With the RPMI, they start to die after 72 hours. But look at with uh, isotonic seawater, the line is flat. They can survive more than 100 hours. And in fact, the experiment were, was done, to, and we see that they can uh, survive more than 150 hours. We continue with uh, Professor Jose Miguel Sempere. He start, he start, he, he demonstrate um, not only this reaction of uh, the white cells, but uh, he demonstrate that the seawater can activate five different markers of uh, immunological markers. And the seawater can uh, modulate perfectly these, fine, these five uh, um, immunological markers. So one of the markers was the molecule of adhesion. The molecule of adhesion are these small molecules that allow the, uh, the white cell to go outside the vessel of the blood. So if you have more molecules, uh, adhesion molecules, you can go faster to the focus of infection. So this is the, th the five markers, really, we demonstrate. We can modulate very well with isotonic seawater. One is uh, this molecule of adhesion, white cells, interleukin-2, TNF-alpha, and interferon gamma. The interferon gamma is very important because the interferon gamma is going to activate interferon alpha and beta to control the size of the tumors. And Jose Miguel published in uh, the Congress of Immunology in Vienna in 2015, the last uh, work uh, paper, is talking about uh, modulation of the human system again with uh, the isotonic seawater. And we can see really that there is a synergy effect of isotonic seawater in the lymphocytary proliferation. Isotonic seawater seems to compensate RPMI nutrients reduction with greater communication between cells. At lower pHa stimulation, we observed a greater difference between uh, the, the difference in proliferation between isotonic seawater and PBS. And there seems to be a threefold quantity. That means the most important in the seawater is not the quantity of minerals, it's the quality of these minerals, the bioavailability of these minerals. It's a reason we can have this kind of testimonial from, uh, here is from uh, Malaysia. Um, many different uh, diseases can be treated with um, isotonic seawater. Here we have a virus infection, 
and only a few ampules of uh, isotonic seawater retrieved the man in only three days. We can see the same eczema I show you in the old pictures, but in uh, recent pictures, always from uh, Malaysia. Eczema in children, in adults, muscle atrophy, inflammation in uh, ACE. Just cleaning the ACE and drinking isotonic seawater, you can uh, restore this. This is, um, we have to just to check a little bit of this uh, picture. This is a young boy, he's only 11 years old. As you can see, he has a lot of uh, wounds on the, the skin. And uh, in fact, he's a, a mercury toxicity. You know that in uh, Malaysia, they, they eat a lot of fish, and the fish uh, is, um, come from uh, the Strait of Malacca. The Strait of Malacca is the worst uh, water you can find in the world, I think. And so they, they eat this kind of fish, a lot of mercury, of course, and this is uh, the result of uh, the, the disease they have. And we can see that only one ampule of uh, isotonic seawater per day during 20 days is a difference between the two pictures. So there is really um, a very incredible improvement when you try to clean your body from heavy metals. This is uh, the works of uh, Chris Shade. Chris Shade is in the uh, United States, in Colorado. He's the most important uh, person uh, working on uh, detoxity of metal detoxification. And he used always isotonic seawater to try to put inside, uh, outside the cell the mercury. There is another paper, very interesting, published in the Journal di Gerontologia in Italy by uh, Dr. Roberto Lacava, is how to use uh, isotonic seawater in um, elderly people with dementia. So we show that we can improve the general condition of these uh, people only using uh, isotonic seawater. And the latest uh, paper we submitted uh, recently, it was uh, how uh, drinking seawater while involved with resistance training program can improve kidney health and cardiovascular health and isometric strength. So, this was made by uh, Professor uh, Juan Carlos Colado from the University of uh, Valencia. Uh, so how to use Quinton uh, uh, hypertonic seawater in a spore to improve the resistance training. So at least the last slide is about a publication we made with uh, Dr. Alexander Koklov in, uh, from the University of Moscow about uh, the potential geroprotector uh, Quinton marine plasma in experiments on cultured cell. It's very interesting to demonstrate that the perfect liquid to maintain and to create life is really isotonic seawater. Just you can find in this uh, publication, this paper in Current Aging Science, all uh, re the resume of this uh, presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for this nice presentation. Um, a few questions uh, before the break. Yes, over here. What have been your findings regarding the con contamination of water around Fukushima? We know that there has been a serious uh, problem with the, with the plankton uh, and also the effects of being monitored also off of Korea and the neighboring countries. In all uh, Asian areas, there are a lot of problems of contamination. Not only Fukushima, there are the contamination from the, uh, the Yellow um, River from China too, carrying a lot of uh, heavy metals. Uh, it's very difficult to, uh, to find an area in this uh, region uh, with a good uh, seawater. But the fact is, we are harvesting the seawater in the uh, Golfo de Vizcaya in Spain. And we know that the seawater 
of the uh, Atlantic is going to be renewed with Pacific sea water every 1,000 years. So we have time to wait uh, that the Atlantic sea water will uh, be um, uh, contaminated with, with Fukushima accident. Okay? Uh, of course, uh, there is in um, Atlantic sea, you, you, I don't know if you remember, in the 60s, they start to, to drop uh, the containers with um, um, ra radioactivity dust in, in the Atlantic uh, abyss. And we know that there, there, there were a, a German channel who filmed the, the containers, and the containers were totally open, and the plutonium in contact with the seawater, but there were no radioactivity. So a reaction, uh, a 30,000 years reaction, will be done in only 60 years. So it's something very strange. Nobody knows what's happened really, but there is no more contamination in, uh, of radioactivity in these points. Last question uh, over here. How you try to identify the components or the combination of components that, uh, um, that has the, the, the curative effects? But in, in one ampoule of uh, seawater, you can find the minerals. The minerals, its analysis is made at the University of Alicante by the, um, the chemical, uh, uh, the chemical uh, department. Uh, they use ECPM and uh, ECP uh, OAS to, to demonstrate how many minerals there is in. And the amino acid and the vitamins, there is no way to do it. There is some papers uh, talking about the presence of vitamin B, it's a family of the vitamin B in the oceans, but there is no technical to, not techniques, analysis techniques to, to do it. So we don't know exactly the different compounds. Thank you once again. Thank you.